And a good Friday morning. I'm meteorologist Pate Malone. This is your September 2nd uh, tropical update as we now have our first hurricane of the 2022 hurricane season. First of all, let me just say this is not going to be a threat to anyone, so we're looking good there, but we do have our first hurricane of the season and um, it's running a bit behind schedule here. What I'm showing you here are our average formation dates. Notice yesterday is when our storm formed on the uh, September 1st, usually our four storms forms around August 15th. The first hurricane on average forms around August 11th. So we are well behind the average first state of our hurricane uh, first hurricane, but it is here and it's known as Hurricane Danielle. Where is it? Well, it's way up in the northern Atlantic. Quite unusual to see your first hurricane that far north in the month of September, but that's where it's at. Notice there's a couple of other areas. I'll talk more about those in just a minute, but with starting with Danielle, um, in this uh, storm, 75 mile per hour category one hurricane sitting really nowhere near land. The closest area of land is going to be the Azores uh, Islands out here, still about 900 miles away from that. You can see Bermuda way off the screen here, and then it's got Maine and Canada up here. So this thing is way on up to the north here. And as that's actually expected to strengthen some over the next couple of days, there's a closer look at some of our high resolution um, uh, satellites you can see there rather impressive structure for that part of the Atlantic. So these are the type of hurricanes you don't mind talking about because, well, it's really not going to affect anyone. Maybe some shipping routes, but that's about it. Take a look at the path here through the next five days. Remember, our cones go five days and it keeps it out there. It just kind of meanders, not really moving at all. It's moving at one mile per hour, so you could walk faster than this thing is moving. It'll meander out here and then eventually get some speed to it into the end of the weekend and next week as it makes its way eventually out towards the northwest. So it should pass north of the Azores Islands, but they do have it strengthening upwards to about 100 and maybe a little bit stronger than that if it continues on its current trend. So uh, rather interesting that this is our first hurricane. Someone asked yesterday, how do you get a hurricane in this part of the Atlantic? It's too cold. Well, actually, something interesting this year has been the weather pattern for this part of the Atlantic. It's been dealing with a lot of hot weather big ridge of high pressure has been sitting up in this part of the Atlantic and that has allowed it to really warm up. What you're looking at here are sea surface temperature anomalies. That simply means what is the current temperature and how does it compare to what it would normally look like? And you see all the reds here in the northern Atlantic. That shows you where there is a large area of water up there that is running warmer than normal. So that's how we're able to get a hurricane this far north in the Atlantic. The waters are incredibly warm. Now what's interesting about this pattern is this is probably why hurricane season has been so quiet lately. What has happened here is we've had a big ridge of high pressure that has developed and I'm going to draw it on here to show you a big ridge of high pressure has developed in this part of the Atlantic this year and that has allowed for more wind shear and uh, dry air to get down into the deeper tropics. So you can see right in here is where our ridge of high pressure has been. But on the other side of the ridge, we call this wave breaking because imagine a wave's coming down like this and then it breaks downward and it creates this upper level low. Now what this does, this little kink you see here drawn there, that allows more wind shear in the lower parts of the tropic. It also allows a lot of dry air to spill down. And look what it's done to our sea surface temperatures. It's knocked them down too. So you get too much shear, you get too much dry air, you get sea surface temperatures that are moderate. It's going to be difficult for tropical systems to form. So we've had all these tropical waves rolling off and uh, this is a preliminary outlook on what we think it's been so slow, but probably because of that. On the flip side though, it's created this a large area of warm water and that's why we have a hurricane up there right now. So kind of inversely related with our current thing. So interestingly enough there, that's why we have a strong storm up there on September the 2nd. Now deeper in the tropics, we are watching a couple of things. It's not completely dead, but uh, it's still struggling. All these tropical waves are still struggling. This is Invest 91. Notice it is getting closer to the Caribbean islands out here. There's uh, Barbados right there. There's the British and U.S. Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico is just under the British Virgin Islands there, that icon. And it's struggling quite a bit. Just looking at satellite presentation here, it's pretty evident there's some shear and dry air still getting pulled up into this thing. And that's why it just hasn't done much. It is moving west. And if you've been watching, it was anticipated to be more so up here, but it's been so unorganized that that's allowed the wave to move more westerly rather than northwest. So a weaker system is usually going to get blown further west. A stronger system will tap into more upper level winds and that would pull it further, further to the north. So that's why it hasn't turned to the northwest or north yet. 
Do we think that will happen at some point? Yes. Uh, it's just going to wait until it gets organized, really. Now, the islands out here, even if it does get a little bit closer, it's still going to be weakened and organized. So it's not going to cause huge problems, but it may bring more showers and thunderstorms in those directions. So this thing, we do expect it to move northwest. It may skirt the islands unless it starts to really get stronger. Um, then that's what will turn it to the north. So it's got the wind shear and dry air right now. Some of our guidance shows, well, it fights off that dry air in the next couple of days and tries to become a depression or a storm. Now, what you're looking at here are our tropical models, our ensembles, or as a lot of people call them, spaghetti plots. And you can really see the story that they're painting here. These more southern solutions that look like they skirt the Caribbean islands right here and move upwards from the Lesser Antilles to the Greater Antilles. These are your weaker models. These are the models spitting out a weaker system that struggles and it allows it to blow further west before it starts to make that turn. Now these northern models you see here on the northern side of your solutions are models that are depicting a stronger system. So as the system gets stronger, it starts to feel the tug of an upper level trough coming in from the east and that's what's pulling it to the north. Now eventually the entire system will fill the tug and it'll get turned out to the sea. But the big question right now is when does that turn happen and how organized does it get? Um, with how it's gone fighting all that wind shear and dry air, it's plausible that some of these models are overdoing the intensity and turning it too quickly. And it may actually get a little bit further. Maybe it's just north of Puerto Rico by this weekend or getting closer to the Turks and Caicos, but as a weak storm. So that's the good news there, even if it does track close to the islands, it should be fairly weak. Now, if it does strengthen, the good news with that, well, then it's gonna go out into the Atlantic. So all the scenarios are not really concerning at this point for any of, uh, of, of what we're gonna be watching with Invest 91. And by the way, Invest 94 is behind that. It's really not expected to do anything anymore. If 91 does get its act together and become our next name storm, it would, uh, of course, be, tr uh, if it's a tropical depression, it'd be tropical depression six, but if it gets a name, it would be our fifth name storm which is Earl, but we'll wait and see if that actually happens. But um, just kind of recapping, Tropical Storm Danielle has strengthened to Hurricane Danielle sitting in the far north Atlantic. Not going to impact anyone on land. It doesn't look like for at least the next five days it's going to meander out there. And then Invest 91 could potentially become a depression over the next couple of days. And if it does become a storm, it would get the name Earl. But that's going to do it for our Friday morning 10 a.m. tropical update. I hope everyone has a wonderful, safe Labor Day weekend, and it is nice that we're not worried about the tropics here in the United States. Have a good one.